Okay, I have started recording. Great. All right. Um, I think we'll get started, even though it seems that folks are coming in uh, slowly or still coming in slowly. Uh, thank you so much for joining our uh, interim. Um, I'm Lou Berger. We have Janusz Farkas also online. Uh, Ethan uh, sends his regrets. Uh, he's unable to be here. Uh, I put into the chat session a link to the virtual blue sheets. Um, it is on uh, Etherpad. Please uh, make sure you go there and put your name at the end. Also, um, please stay there once you do that and uh, help us uh, capture what's discussed. Uh, as always, you know, this is an, an, a formal IETF meeting, which means we have our note well, which covers our, anything that's said here uh, becomes part of our record. Uh, we are recording this call, um, although I don't see the record. Ah, ah there it is. It's uh, in the upper right. It should say that we're recording, um, and um, so everything we say is is covered by our you know, well and I, our our IPR process. The slides are also available at that same Etherpad link. If you click there, it'll take you to the data tracker, um, and you can see that the the know well there if uh, you're unfamiliar with it. We're going to try to use chat just for queue management. Um, so you'll see an occasional reminder from the chairs to, to go do the blue sheet. Um, but everything else, we should just uh, use plus queue, minus queue to enter the queue and to leave the queue. And we'll call on you. One of us will call on you when it's uh, when it's your time to speak. If you're not speaking, please mute yourself. It looks like you know everyone's really familiar with remote at this point, and everyone's already done that. So thank you so much. Um, so uh, I've, we've already said the blue sheets a few times. Um, uh, the the other thing on here is is we are using Jabber. Uh, there's very few people on it, um, but that's that's a good place to chat if you feel like uh, just typing things. Our agenda is adjusted a little bit from where, where it was announced. Um, we're only going to be talking about um, uh, IP OEM. We dropped the what was originally the fourth topic with MPLS OEM because there was no updates to go over. Um, we think this agenda is not going to take the full two hours. Uh, if for some reason we do end up talking more on a particular topic or an additional topic, um, we can take that full two hours, but we don't plan to go beyond that. So one of the discussions we thought it'd be worth having with the list is um, this how we continue in this mode, because it seems like we're going to be in this mode for a while, right? Where uh, uh, no announcement has, been, well, uh, uh, 108 is obviously virtual. That's been announced. We've uh, all seen the discussions on the list about that. Um, 109 is still TBD. Um, you know, I'm personally skeptical about it. You know, I'm also disappointed, but uh, I'm skeptical that that will be in person. But even if it isn't, it, it is in person, we're going to be working in this mode for a while. And we, we really wanted to get some input from the group um, on how they think we should be working. Um, and it, it's clearly a challenge. Uh, we've seen some good discussions on the list. Um, we've always done, you know, had the list as part of our formal process. Uh, that, that hasn't changed. Um, we've seen a fair number of informal meetings and we, we support that. Those types of informal meetings are always available uh, to working group members. Uh, the chairs are, uh, can set up the, the working group WebEx. Um, and we will, we will announce any of those meetings to the list so others can come in. And we also have these virtual meetings. And we're doing this, what we're doing here right now is an example of one. Frankly, it's a lot less attended than an in-person meeting. So. You know, it's not clear how successful these virtual meetings will be. Um, and there is a virtual 108 planned. We do, we have put in a meeting request. Um, we're interested in hearing from uh, participants what, how they think uh, the virtuals are going, um, the, you know, the working meetings, the virt this virtual, 
uh, as well as how we might um, best continue be in, during this time where we're, we're not doing in-person meetings. So um, I don't see people jumping in the queue, but here's an opportunity to chime in if you have something you'd like to comment or say. Uh, if not, we're also happy to take comments on the list. So I'll pause for a moment to see if anyone wants to jump in the queue. Well, so, before moving on, just one word on the Etherpad. Uh, please provide your full name and affiliation as well. Uh, not, not just a name, and please use uh, uh, Latin characters, uh, not uh, special characters. Uh, this is uh, needed as, as usual for our blue sheet. Yeah, and that, that's part also part of our record, and we do ask and expect people to uh, to sign in with their affiliation. Um, uh, and you know, it's whoever whoever you feel that you're representing today is your affiliation. <laughs> so definitely, please do that. Um, okay, I will uh, then. Let's move on. If you have thoughts on this, um, please do send it to the list. Um, uh, it, it's an important topic. It's just a reminder, we do have a, an IPR uh, uh, process where we um, at, formally ask for disclosure uh, of IPR both before adoption and before last call. Um, the generally people are responsive on that, sometimes not so much, and um, we will ask for for, for res explicit responses from all authors and con listed contributors uh, before going to uh, last call, certainly. I mean, excuse me, before going to publication uh, uh, request to the IESG. So good news, we have our first set of um, uh, RFCs published. That's uh, really great news. Um, we also have a number of drafts with the IESG and um, uh, some of them just came in or have come in uh, pretty recently like the security document, um, and, but others have been there for a while. Notably, the data plane framework draft, the IP draft, the MPLS draft, uh, well, notably those, that, that core set of documents. Uh, we do have um, our uh, AD on, Deborah, so appreciate her attention on this. There's been a little bit of a holdup on uh, moving these documents, uh, on getting them scheduled, primarily because of the discussion on the MPLS document that's going on on the list. Um, the, the the list discussion has been that a particular mode of um, uh, pre-off or uh, of the the replication and elimination is not supported in the current draft. Um, I think the list accurately reflects um, uh, multiple people's reading of the of the document. So when I say I, I'm talking as an individual. <laughs> Um, you know, as a because I am also a contributor on this document. As I read the document, um, the specific point that's a question is: is that at a readly node, you for a particular service that you must send with a single S label? Uh, my view is that's a simplification that was taken in order to get the documents done, and that is what the document says. Uh, we could pull it back and change that behavior to allow relays to have multiple outcomes, multiple outgoing S labels for the um, for the same service uh, if the working group uh, thinks that it's right to pull that document back uh, for that purpose. Uh, I have not um, uh, personally, I can't make the, 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 well, I don't know if I can make the call or not. I haven't seen support for that, but I'd like to, uh, and we the, as chairs with chair hat on, would like to give an opportunity to anyone who is um, uh, on the call to speak up for if they think we should pull the document back to allow this, this change. And again, the change is, is that on a, for a particular service at a relay node, you can use two different outgoing S labels. Um, 
Well, hope, we'll see if anyone jumps in the queue, giving people a moment. I'll mention that uh, the, the comment that was made by Balaj on the list is, is that uh, you can support a particular mode of protection uh, today, but it requires coordination across multiple nodes to use the same S label. Um, and that, you know, that, that's a compromise, that's certainly a compromise position. And uh, that's where the working group ended up. It, it, again, if the working group wants to change it, it's better to change it now than to try to fix it later. Um, uh, but we're also not seeing people putting on the list messages to saying, let's change it. Um, does anyone want to comment on this before we move on? It's, a, it's an important topic. Okay, again, seeing no, oh, uh, I see, Balaj? Uh, yes, um, so I, I think the issue here is that people have different reading of the document. Um, because my understanding is uh, is not really the same as your understanding. Uh, and um, I think that the, the comment that we have received on the list is to a specific point in the document, which is dealing with the S labels. Uh, however, the, the, uh, the consequences, how to use the S labels and the procedures for the H node and the relay nodes, they are not formulated on, on that part. So um, I think that is somewhat confusing because I think that uh, in that part of the document where we are describing the procedures, uh, we are allowing that uh, uh, behavior that was commented uh, as a missing behavior. Uh, but I think during uh, uh, them there was some discussion and what I have learned is that maybe people read the document differently, which is not a good thing. Uh, and I, I think it would be better to have uh, a really explicit document and not to fix it later. Uh, let's see, uh, Young Dong is in the uh, uh, queue. Uh, go ahead. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yes, now we do. And it, uh, please mute yourself if you're not talking. Uh, okay. No, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, uh, uh, I don't have a strong opinion opinion on whether we uh, should pull out the document, the draft from the from the IESG uh, evaluation or not. But the uh, but my position is that the I really that a uh, .NET MPLS data plan solution does not mandate the use of the same uh, label value in all uh, all the edge and really nodes associated with a specific service uh, over the whole network. So if if it is too late uh, to add new text to, to the draft, uh, then the, uh, I think uh, um, we start on a, a new draft which addresses uh, this issue. And uh, again, and I have no strong opinion. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. The um, the draft doesn't require the same label everywhere. Um, the the particular point is is that the uh, at an elimination point, that elimination uses the same label. So at each elimination point, you have to, both uh, incoming services. Uh, I'm sorry, both the incoming. Um, uh, forwarding sublayer uh, packets have to come in with the same the same S label, and that has an implication that if you're doing replication at multiple places, that they have to each of those replication points have to use that same label. Um, even if you're, and this this is, comes in when you have overlapping uh, uh, overlapping cases. 
Um, so for that service where you have this overlapping protection, you end up having to use the same label. But in other cases where you don't have this overlapping protection, it's you don't have that. It, you can use different as many labels as you want, or many different label values as you want. Um, but that's fundamentally the question: is is do we want this other behavior? And to the process point, if we have some small clarification text which are not is not changing behavior and it's just an editorial in nature, uh, I don't think it's too late to put those in and without doing a full reset. But if we are doing a change in the in the in the the uh, the data plane behavior, we absolutely have to bring it back to the working group. Um, Greg. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I agree with the uh, Balash characterization. So uh, it appears that uh, there is a, a difference interpretation. But what my question is: uh, Do we have a candidate text uh, that uh, at least we have some um, part of the uh, participants of the discussion would uh, propose uh, to put uh, or? put in the document or replace part of the document. Because if we pull the uh, draft now and realize that, well, we don't have an agreement, we don't have anything that uh, we want to uh, say in an updated document, then what's the purpose of pulling it out? I think I think we have to make the decision of are we trying to clarify the current behavior or are we changing the behavior? And those are two very different uh, pieces of text. And I think it's the, the working group has to decide whether it just wants to make sure we have a clear document or we want this different functionality. Personally, I 100% I think we have to have a clear document. Um, and uh, uh, in terms of the change of the functionality, I completely defer to the working group. I have a similar view. So I would like to have a very clear document. But uh, the behavior decision belongs to the working group. So uh, we're going to try a experiment in Etherpad. Um, I actually don't even have Etherpad. <laughs> I lost my Etherpad window because I was talking. But I'd like to go into Etherpad and, um, ah, well, first of all, I know no one's capturing this conversation. The hope is, is that people will help capture uh, the, the discussion. Um, so, so regarding the, uh, we have two questions. One is, uh, whether to just uh, clarify the document. Or to do a, um, or to uh, modify data plane behavior to allow, um, Relay to send multiple S labels. Or actually, different S labels for same service. So at the end, if you could just put um, uh, one letter, your maybe your first initial or last initial, uh, if you like either of these, on Etherpad. And again, I'll put the the the, the link in Etherpad. Sorry, the link to Etherpad in the chat window. Please go there now, and if you have an opinion, put which one you prefer. Um, it is acceptable to um, to just put your name uh, to put your name um, in two places. For example, I am going to put my name uh, at the end for a clarify document. Um, I'm going to say I don't care about modify document. So this is a little bit of an on-the-fly uh, hum. Uh, 
I hope that's clear. Uh, maybe just like uh, Go ahead. I think there might be also disagreement regarding what is the understanding, what is currently in the document. What do you do? You think that it allows multiple S labels uh, on the uh, at a relay node exactly. for the because, same service? Yes. You think it does? Yeah. Or uh, it does not uh, prohibit it uh, explicitly. Not to have it. So I think, uh, and and that might be the major issue in the document that when you are reading with that set in mind then you will say whether it is allowed or not. Yeah, I don't I don't see your reading. It says there's a single S label per app flow. Uh, no one is putting any comments. So maybe I'm gonna do a third one, which is don't care. <laughs> so let's see if people are actually listening. If you don't care about this topic, please just put your either initial or. So, yeah, just for clar clarification. So, okay, now it's an LB. It was a B for a while. Okay. <laughs> no. Mistyped. Sorry. So, so please put your initial to either either under or in the line of item one. X or two, X or B uh, three. Maybe just one more question for clarification. So I think we are not setting the S label for the service, but we are setting the S label for uh, the member flows. So per flow and not really per service. Well, this goes to the clarification. We'll, we'll, we'll need to clarify that. And I think that uh, Greg has a good point. We'll have to clarify that on the list. And if there, if that clarification leads with a technical disagreement, and we, you know, we may it still end up sending to the list back. So, um, uh, Deborah, put you on the spot um, with respect to the MPLS documents only. If we want to make editorial changes, just to clarify, is it appropriate to do that in its current state? Or do we have to send it back to the list, even just uh, to the working group, even just for editorial? Deborah, you're on mute. Sorry, only the two <laughs> mutes to undo. <laughs> okay, so yes, um, it, it should be. It's fine to do editorial because um, it's no different than when we make clarifications as a basis of the different area directorate reviews, you know, before we actually put it on the telechat or even on the telechat. So it's fine if it's just editorial. Okay. Um, I, I think where this leaves us is we're going to, um, uh, we should come up with a proposed editorial change to draft DetNet, uh, draft IETF DetNet MPLS, um, circulated on the list. And then at that time, um, visit whether, revisit whether or not we're doing a functionality change. Um, obviously functionality changes, we would require it to be sent back to the um, uh, working group. So uh, from an IESG situation, I think of the, um, the the data plane drafts listed on this slide, we have five of them um, that, that are with the IESG. Uh, the, I, I believe the MPLS ones should be held up, which means that the first two listed are fully ready to go. Um, but the MPLS ones, we should wait until we get this clarification. I actually don't think it'll modify the last two, but obviously if the base document isn't there, um, uh, we shouldn't do, proceed with the, the the other ones that are dependent on it. Um, Deborah, is that clear that the you know the the first two are are continue can continue and it's only the MPLS related ones we we want to just hold for the moment um, and we may come back and say we need to take that third document and have it sent back to the working group. Yes, 
that's clear. Hey, just make sure, because this is sort of a new rule the ISG has, that any um, comments from any of the area directorate reviews, um, you need to respond to. So make sure whoever is holding the pen for those two documents that they can say that they've been responded to. Otherwise, when it comes up on the telechat, that that will be uh, a big blocker because they will say that, and you don't, in an area director review, you don't have to actually change something, but you do have to show due diligence that you responded to it, okay? So whoever's holding the pen. I think Balaj already sent them. out summaries, but we'll, we'll do a double check on that. Okay. Okay, great. Um, uh, so, so for that, uh, we really did respond to every comment. So, so uh, we, 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 it was double checked, and we are, we are good on that front. Okay, so uh, we're going to move on. Uh, hopefully, uh, get us, uh, uh, keep us on track to just have some good discussion time. Also available for for Yang. Uh, thank Blue. you all who. Uh, 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 participated and it's good for the whole working group to be aware of the situation. Obviously, as we said, we're going to resolve this on the list. That's always where we resolve issues. Uh, oh, okay. I see. Uh, uh, go ahead, please. I, I, did, I missed that you were in queue. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, this is Young Dong anyway. Uh, in, the, in the question you put uh, in the, in the uh, etherpad, uh, I need to modify the second uh, uh, second option. Uh, modify data data uh, behavior to allow relay to send different S labels for same service. But the the as far as the uh, relay node is concerned, we can understand that the relay node can send different S labels to, to uh, different uh, outgoing member flow. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't have an uh, issue with a relay node. So I'm, I, I'm concerned about uh, uh, edge node. Here, the edge node, the only uh, text I see is only one S label is allowed for or multiple outgoing mem member flows. So I would like to uh, propose change. Second, uh, uh, second question there from relay to edge. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, I've just made the change to, to try to clarify that. So, so it's both okay. edge or relay. Or relay or edge and the relay nodes or whatever. I mean, okay, this is fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, we'll start with the clarifying text. And if we find that we don't have agreement on the clarifying text, we'll ask for the document to come back to the working group. You want to do it right now or? No, 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 uh, on the list. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You know, we only have 26 people. <laughs> That's a small group um, for compared to what we normally have in terms of participants. So, you know, as always, our formal process is we resolve issues on the list, but it's good to get the discussion of people that are here. Okay. So the last topic I think we have here is on rechartering. Um, uh, we do have a revised charter that was approved. Thank you very much to our ID, Deborah, for getting that done. Um, the main addition is bringing in um, controller plane uh, definitions and documentation. That was previously not in our charter. It now is. There's also been some minor um, wording editorial pieces as well as uh, trying to align with where things have shifted in uh, uh, working groups and other working groups, because uh, we do have references to other working groups. Um, so that change is reflected in uh, also an update on our uh, deliverables, our, our milestones and deliverables. The um, uh, We have a bunch of items that are done. That's always great to have done items. 
Uh, and we have updated dates on um, our current document set and um, uh, and I think these are in line with the, the documents that we have in flight um, with the exception of the controller plane uh, framework. We had some good momentum on the controller plane framework. I suspect that um, uh, the last, the 107 being virtual may have slowed us down a little bit, uh, but we are definitely looking to uh, uh, adopt um, the document that's being discussed uh, on the list, there are um, uh, there's open comments. Um, that said, if there's alternative uh, documents that anyone wishes to contribute, we don't have a working group document at this point, so that's acceptable. Uh, Andy, you're in queue. There. Um, I just wanted to make sure everyone is aware now that um, this. This uh, document has a new editor as of this morning. I was the editor. Um, however, my new job doesn't give me uh, sufficient time. So Chu Song has, um, has volunteered to, to take over the editorship. Uh, that's great. Thanks for the, for the update. Um, uh, Song, we look forward to seeing a document soon. Uh, as an individual document, you know, the authors get to choose however they want to organize um, the content uh, as well as uh, authors, editors, and um, so that's great that, that the work will continue. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Andy, for, for your work and introducing uh, me as the new editor for the job. And maybe, uh, I noticed that there were some uh, comments in the mailing list about draft. Also, uh, maybe some conditions from the work, working group chair, uh, and I will be uh, working on this in the following days. Hopefully, we could move this uh, document forward. Yeah, uh, from a chair uh, perspective, it's good to address comments that were sent to the list. I think Janos did send some comments, but I think they were sent uh, as individual. He can clarify. Uh, but no matter what, it's it, uh, it, it's better to resolve uh, comments before we go into adoption that's, than have comments to say, you know, we shouldn't adopt until these comments are addressed. So it, it's better just to, to, to get, get them addressed um, before trying to do an adoption. Yes, uh, yes I, I, I sent it as an individual. The comments. Uh, yes, yeah. so uh, Yano, would you like uh, me to uh, respond to the email uh, to the mailing list or we can keep it uh, in private, private email at first and if we have a conclusion we can discuss in the mailing list. I would suggest using ma mailing. I would suggest using the mailing list because the discussion was on the mailing list, and uh, and uh, uh, email. I think you might be wrong. Was that uh, Andy was about to uh, to make updates based on the discussion? So I think it's better uh, to sure. continue with the with the group or in the list. Sure. And also, if anybody is interested in the work, yeah, please uh, contribute to the document or give them comments or questions in the mailing list. I will uh, try to answer it and also um, cooperate with other authors in the document. Okay, okay. great, thank you. Hope we will have a progress. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, all right, so uh, uh, these are, um, this is on the, the data tracker and, uh, you know, it's a, if anyone has comments um, beyond what we've talked about here, feel free to send them to the list. Um, our, as a reminder, as I mentioned earlier, our next meeting is expected to be at 108. Um, the, we hope that you know, update your drafts in time to, for discussion there, um, and we'll see uh, how we organize that meeting based on uh, the slot requests. 
one of the discussions that some of us have had is whether or not to have um, a uh, longer meeting where we, we like this, where we have uh, uh, make close to well more than an hour and can get into some good discussions like we've done today, or to have a shorter meeting that's almost just status and then having um, uh, more interim meetings. And this goes to the, the question we, we talked about earlier of, of how do we work in this distributed mode and what's the best way for that. And we certainly are looking for input on that and think about that in terms of making a request. If um, you do make a request for the session, but also think that you would like to have an interim uh, to cover a particular topic, feel free to put that into request. Again, anytime uh, a contributor wants or a participant wants to either have an interim or an informal meeting, just let the chairs know and we'll, we'll, um, we'll coordinate on that. Uh, with that, we definitely have gone longer, or I definitely have gone longer than I had hoped on this topic. And we're going to switch to the next topic that's up, uh, which is um, TSN. Uh, Balaj, if I think you're the one presenting, either I can present from here or you can grab the screen as you so choose. And that's the same for all presenters. If you want to present from your from your own screen, please feel free to to just say that that's what you're going to do. If you don't, and I have them queued up here. So your call. I, I think that that is fine. Thank you very much. So this is just a summary about uh, the TSN related uh, definite data plane drafts. And if we can jump to the next slide, it is just highlighting that we have three documents. Uh, two of them is dealing with scenarios where TSN is a subnetwork uh, in a DETNET. So these are DETNET over subnet uh, scenarios. This is, these are the IP over TSN and MPLS over TSN uh, documents. Uh, and the third document is dealing uh, how to interconnect uh, TSN Ethernet uh, networks over a DEFNET domain. So that is the third document. Uh, please jump to the next slide. It is just providing the link to the document so we can skip this and go to the next slide. Uh, and uh, in the slides, I will uh, update what, uh, what is the content of these drafts and what was changed uh, uh, before uploading the, the latest version. Uh, so the IP over TSN document specified the deterministic uh, IP data plane when it is operating over a TSN subnetwork. Uh, as we are speaking about an IP data plane, it only provides the .NET forwarding sublayer functionality. Uh, and uh, if service protection is implemented, it is only within the subnetwork, so within the TSN uh, uh, subnetwork. Uh, the document also summarized the management and control information summary, and we have also updated the security section in order to highlight the security uh, issues raised with the subnetwork specific uh, scenario. Uh, the next slide is uh, summarizing uh, practically the, the behavior uh, from management and control information uh, perspective, what you have to provide. Uh, we have defined the functionalities for a TSM aware IP .NET node. Uh, and that node is practically a member of both the .NET domain and the TSM subnetwork. Uh, and within the TSN subnetwork, uh, the DEFNET uh, node behaves like a TSN aware talker or listener. So that is the role that it must fulfill. Um, and uh, of course, the DEFNET uh, flow uh, related uh, parameters and identification, they must be converted to TSN stream IDs and stream related parameters. Uh, there are three set of information with, which have to be provided in order to configure such a, a DEFNET IP node in order to use uh, the TSN subnetwork. So there are DEFNET IP related configuration because it have a DEFNET role. It has TSN related configuration uh, according to the TSN role that uh, that uh, node has in the inside the TSN subnetwork. And the, uh, and the third set of uh, configuration parameters are related how to map the DEFNET IP flows uh, and the TSN streams. 
the next slide is showing uh, the MPLS over TSM document. Uh, if we can jump to the next slide. Um, it is describing uh, uh, the scenario where a TSN subnetwork is used to interconnect uh, MPLS .NET nodes. Uh, MPLS data plane provides both .NET service and forwarding sublayers. Uh, we have uh, taken the service protection interworking out of scope in the document. So this is something that is left for further study. That means that uh, uh, service uh, resiliency related functionalities uh, uh, which requiring uh, a sequence number, they are TSM and MPLS specific. So they are not interacting uh, in the current version of the document. It is also summarizing management and control information and the security section was also updated in this document. Uh, and the next slide is uh, showing uh, also uh, the management and control information uh, stuff. It is very similar uh, from structure perspective to the IP scenario, but of course here we are speaking about uh, MPLS uh, .NET domain and MPLS node. Uh, it is acting from TSN uh, subnetwork perspective again as a TSN aware talker and listener ro uh, role, and we have to map uh, the MPLS. Um, uh, that net flows to the uh, TSN streams. So we, here we have also uh, very similar uh, to the previous uh, IP over TSN scenario, three set of information for configuration. One is related to the that net role uh, of the node. Uh, the other is related to the TSN role of the that net and PLS node inside the TSN uh, uh, subnetwork. And the third set of information is required in order to map the .NET MPLS flows to TSM streams. So these were uh, the two documents, uh, how to use a TSM subnetwork. And if we jump to the next slide, it will uh, show uh, the scenario uh, where uh, uh, .NET data plane is used to interconnect TSM networks uh, over a .NET MPLS network. Uh, here, the concept is that the TSN streams are treated as .NET app flow at the age of the uh, M .NET MPLS network. Um, .NET domain uh, practically behaves like a big TSN relay node for the TSN streams, uh, and the ports and the service proxy on the age node, they are practically uh, can be treated as a port of, of that uh, TSN relay node. Uh, we have described the procedures regarding TSN over MPLS uh, scenario. Uh, there are procedures for TSN functionalities, um, .NET service prox proxy related procedures. This is the functionality which is mapping the TSN uh, streams to uh, .NET flows. Uh, then the .NET service and forwarding sublayer uh, related functionalities. Uh, and uh, here, similarly to the, uh, the previous document, there is a possibility to have service protection interworking, but this is something that is for further study and not covered in the document. Uh, this document also have a management and control information summary and the security section. Uh, uh, to describe the security related aspects. And the next uh, slide is uh, summarizing uh, uh, the management and control information. Uh, here, practically, the major focus was on the service proxy functionality on the age nodes. Um, service protection interworking was out of scope. And uh, uh, here is also a uh, three set of information for configuration, the TSN role related, the .NET role related, and the uh, mapping related information. So this is about the three uh, documents. And on the last slide, uh, we have summarized what was changed since the, since the last uh, revision. Uh, so there were editorial updates, uh, abbreviation section, references, clarification, typos, they were corrected. 
Uh, we have uh, fixed also the conformance language uh, to uh, to have it fully uh, done. Uh, we have updated the security section, practically based on the lessons we have learned during the IESG review of the data plane documents. Uh, and there were also Sheffield review comments, uh, uh, which were uh, updated in the document. So we have uh, made all these changes. And this is where we are. The document is quite stable. So I think uh, what we have uh, done is, is fine tunings and make a better explanation. Uh, but the basics, how it is working, uh, it was not, not changed in the last two versions of the document. Any questions, comments? You didn't say what you expect the next step to be. Uh, we think that this is ready for Virgo Plus call, so it is quite stable. So it would be great to to have uh, some Virgo Plus call on the documents. Yeah, I I, I think uh, um, that's I, I agree. I think that's what the document is um, with uh, Chair or Shepherd hat on. I will be shepherding uh, these documents. Um, the I would say you've addressed sort of the entry, my entry comments. Uh, I have not done a full review. Um, you know, there's a normal last call process and, you know, we're, we're going to follow that. Uh, but I do think the documents are ready for last call and I don't see a reason not to proceed with that at this point. Uh, does anyone have any other comments they'd like to make about um, uh, if they think the document um, is particularly not ready for last call? And I said I should I said document should be documents plural. Okay, um, are we ready to move on? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Thank you very much. We're going to move on uh, to to Greg. Uh, Greg, do you uh, uh, want to present, or do you want me to do it? Um, I don't know. Uh, it's not a uh, long presentation, so probably if you can help me. Yeah, happy to. It's just Thank you. Sure. Over to you. Okay. Um, so um, this is an update on. Um, OEM for deterministic networks, and um, let's please move to the next slide. Okay, so what we have in the update, uh, David uh, agreed to join um, as a co-author, and um, to the uh, material of the document, what we added is consideration for uh, on-demand OEM using ICMP, uh, active OEM using DEFNET and UDP encapsulation, uh, aspects of mapping active OEM, uh, IP OEM uh, into uh, DEFNET flows, and um, active OEM using GRE and UDP encapsulation. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, what we... Uh, have when we uh, discuss active OEM. Uh, according to uh, classification in RFC 7799, uh, active OEM is the OEM uh, that uses specifically constructed uh, test probes that are injected in the network. Um, so it's uh, well familiar uh, to us uh, being in trace route, so it's the ICMP. Uh, protocol in IP or it's a, a layer two link trace. Uh, proactive path continuity check, um, it's either uh, BFD and BFD have been uh, successfully uh, applied to different encapsulations, IP, MPLS, uh, pseudowires, or it's a, a layer two uh, CCM. Uh, proactive connectivity verification um it's a little bit different so uh we often use the terms continuity check and connectivity verification interchangeably uh, 
which there, these two mechanisms are similar but not identical. And the difference is that continuity check uh, is verifies that there is a path between uh, endpoints. So um, a packet or a frame can be, uh, be delivered from uh, ingress to egress. Uh, the connectivity verification uh, is more strict because it really um, differentiates uh, different connections. Um, so let's speak, uh, if we take like uh, analogy in electric wiring, so the continuity check says, okay, well, uh, there is a way how the electrons get from um, socket to the device. And doesn't matter whether it gets on uh, blue wire or on red wire. Uh, the connectivity verification um, is to verify that electrons get on a wire that we expect, for example. Uh, so there should be a blue wire and no electrons from the red wire should get uh, to the device. Um, with that, uh, there is a, a misconnection uh, error that uh, must have certain uh, terms uh, when there is a this state is entered or uh, cleared. And um, the other example of this work that's been done in ITF uh, dates back to MPLSTP, and many don't have a good memory about it. And um, next and last is performance monitoring. So uh, that includes packet uh, loss and packet delay. And based on this information, the calculation of various uh, metrics like uh, inter-packet delay variation, uh, percentile, so that uh, characterizes their uh, quality of the connection. And that is very important for the net. Next slide, please. Um, okay, so the first protocol, it's um, ICMP. And uh, when we talk about being a trace route in IP, sometimes uh, we um, forget uh, that it's being uh, supported by the uh, separate protocol. Uh, true, uh, it might be realized uh, using some other mecha mechanisms because, for example, there is a uh, UDP ping uh, and TCP thing, but um, the most commonly used is uh, ICMP, and um, it uses their uh, IP protocol um, similar uh, to UDP. Uh, for their um, ping and trace route, uh, we need to have support for echo request, echo reply, and a certain number or subset of error messages like uh, destination unreachable or uh, PTO. And um, the, the challenge for us uh, in uh, DeathNet that uh, we're not only mapping the uh, IP DeathNet flow, uh, but then we need to map uh, ICMP packet that is generated by a uh, specified IP deathnet uh, node and address to the another uh, specified IP deathnet node. And the challenge is that uh, if we have a multipath environment, that needs to be uh, done on uh, multiple nodes. Next slide. Um, Active OEM uh, in the DeathNet, uh, DeathNet in IP encapsulation. So uh, this um, simple drawing to uh, present their um, idea of what it looks. So we have a UDP tunnel. Uh, this is uh, DeathNet over UDP. So uh, the destination UDP port um, is uh, specific to this type of transport. And um, there is a one to one mapping in the tunnel of their uh, DeathNet flow being monitored and uh, active OEM uh, test probes that are performing uh, various 
OEM fun uh, functions that uh, I, I mentioned uh, earlier in the presentation. Um, the challenge here is that the tunnel, as it always is, end to end. So um, the whole IP uh, domain looks like a single hop for the detriment flow and uh, resulting for active OEM. Uh, Greg, I'm going to recognize myself as being in queue. Um, uh -huh. uh, so you're proposing basically a data plane, a new data plane encapsulation, which is um, a, an IP flow, IP .NET flow inside a UDP tunnel, right? Just to be clear, that's that's what you're saying. Uh, yes, that's that's basically what what we have in uh, editor note saying yes. Uh, it does propose a, a new transport, new data plane, um, which allows us to do active OEM. And uh, if it's um, if the working group uh, thinks that this is a viable solution, then probably this work has to be done uh, outside of this document. Yeah. What, what about? Um, I, I noticed that the document doesn't contain any discussion on control plane. Um, I, I sort of expected you to draw the same picture, but instead of say UDP tunnel, uh, make that as an aggregated service. You see that just through the control plane. Um, well, actually, I, I think that if we go to the next uh, uh, slide, so that's where we talk about uh, mapping of. Uh, active OEM in the IP deadman flow. So um, the critical for um, active OEM uh, being useful and accurate and uh, useful in uh, fault management and uh, tracing the path and accurate in performance monitoring is uh, fate sharing. So that uh, test probes uh, do fade share uh, with their flow being uh, monitored. And that has two components. The first is corrupteness. Uh, in other words, is that the test packet traverses uh, the same links and nodes in the network as their uh, flow being monitored. And second is that there are uh, test packets um, being used to monitor uh, that net flow are uh, treated by the network. Um, so that's probably simpler because um, the active OEM will have to uh, sh use the same DCP marking as uh, that net, or it has to be mapped to that net. Uh, Corroutedness, um, again, we can imagine how it's done. And uh, that could be done by using .NET um, uh, ACLs. And effectively, that's um, either, again, it could be a, a black magic to select uh, the source port or um, uh, the spraying um, test packets and uh, identifying all the paths that being taken and then um, correlating this information with information that uh, we have on a DetNet flow that already being uh, pinned in IP network. Uh, again, just as an individual, the uh, I think you're missing here that you can also control um, the treatment on the network through the control plane. Um, unlike, unlike a um, uh, a, a typical um, IP network where flows are routed on destinations, we're doing per service, um, uh, we allow for per service um, treat traffic treatment, including uh, path selection uh, uh, via the controller plane. And I think you're missing this here. Uh, I'm not going to make the comment again um, for the rest of the presentation, but I can take it offline with you if, uh, uh, if you'd like. Um, yes. Um, yeah, let's let's uh, take it to the list, and uh, then um, 
we'll look into how that achieved for the DevNet and how that can be achieved uh, for uh, OEM protocols. Um, as said, um, so there are ways of doing it um, uh, through the ACLs, but if it can be done in um, control plane uh, per flow, per protocol, because again, one of the challenges in uh, IP active OEM is that each protocol um, uses its own uh, well-known uh, destination UDP port, because uh, except for ICMP, which is a different uh, IP protocol, um, other active OEM, uh, they use uh, UDP transport and to demultiplex protocols, uh, use uh, destination ports. Um, okay, uh, next slide, please. Um, so uh, the other is uh, to use active OEM um, in uh, GRE and UDP encapsulation. So uh, it does not affect uh, IP DevNet uh, flow and only OEM is encapsulated. So it uh, reduces the scope of the problem and only this GRE and UDP uh, has to be mapped to IP uh, DevNet flow that's being monitored. And uh, itself, GRE and UDP uh, may use Ethernet uh, OEM, uh, Y1731, which is a, uh, provides their comprehensive tool set. Uh, it's a combination of ping and trace route, um, connectivity um, verification continuity check, and performance measurement, uh, loss measurement, and delay measurement. And that uh, has another nice uh, bonus feature that uh, it simplifies interworking with the TSN domain, because uh, TSN uses Y1731 uh, protocol. Oh, yeah. um, so that's uh, what we updated our document with. Uh, next slide. Uh, we have Balaj in queue. Ah, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, one question regarding your UDP tunnel encapsulation, and it is a question for uh, clarification. So. Does it mean that practically you have to take each packet and decide uh, during the forwarding whether it is an OEM packet or a normal data packet and uh, you have to forward? Um, well, for uh, GRE and UDP or? Um... No, no, for the UDP tunnel, your previous. Uh, DevNet over UDP? You, you had a slide, I think, uh, just going two back where we have the figure. Yes, yes, yes. There is a, yeah, DevNet over UDP. Yes. Yes. It, again, uh, because it basically um, makes the whole uh, IP DevNet um, domain as a single hub. So at egress, um, there will be uh, encapsulation at uh, egress will uh, terminate the tunnel. So, so, there, so there is, yeah, there will be a mapping into the tunnel based on uh, certain rules and uh, control plane. It could be um, uh, control plane, for example, like uh, what we're doing uh, with their advertisement. It could be uh, BGP based um, control plane or something else. But, but that means practically that OEM functions cannot be in the intermediate nodes. You are expecting them only at the end of the UDP tunnel. Uh, the, the, okay, there is some uh, tricks that we are playing uh, with the, what's uh, called uh, transcending thing. So basically, you can know uh, how your tunnel is uh, traversing uh, the domain. But effectively, yes, you are absolutely correct. Um, their domain from OEM perspective will look like a single hub. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, so the uh, last slide we have is the, uh, their invitation for the discussion. And uh, what we would like to have is, and uh, I appreciate the uh, Lou comments and uh, I'm looking forward for uh, continuing this discussion on the list, is uh, what um, needs to be added to the document uh, there are too many options, so definitely we would not recommend all three options. And I, I think that when we uh, go for the discussion, um, we want to end, um, and select one of the uh, mechanisms that we'll uh, uh, take forward, and then we can uh, ask, um, consider a working group adoption. At some at some point, um, I mean, it's good to catalog the options for so that the working group can down select. But at some point, you don't want to say you're you're doing everything. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah. definitely, this is a great a great uh, uh, start. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, again, I, I appreciate your comment, and uh, it's a very good idea to uh, preserve some information, which probably can be moved uh, later on into appendix. Sure. Uh, absolutely. Um, so now we're going to move on to uh, Yang, the Yang conversation. I believe, uh, Shisong, you're going to present first. Do you want to take, uh, do you want to present from uh, your screen or do you want me to uh, do it and you say next? Uh, Lou, please help me to show the screen because uh, there will be multiple others to do the presentation. Great. Thank uh, you. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so just as a just as a time <laughs> check, uh, we we actually sort of internally thought we'd you'd end up with forty five minutes, so you're pretty close to that. Um, so you you have a fair bit of time, and uh, for everyone else on the call, this is the uh, last topic we plan to uh, discuss. Um, and uh, so I, I, we're expecting that this will take the t from the time from now until the end, uh, however long that goes. All right, Shusong, over to you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, this is Xiu Song, and I will introduce the first part of the slide. Uh, we end a new order, uh, Dang, he joined uh, our work, um, I think, from uh, last IETF, and uh, uh, he does a lot of contribution, and uh, we are glad to see that uh, now we have two DNA Yang models, and. Uh, uh during this period of uh, uh, this period of time we are discussing uh, about the differences of these two Dana young models and we try to do the comparison and also to figure out uh, which one is the best way to define Dana young model and which one is better for configuration and understanding and here is our work uh, next slide please Uh, here uh, is a brief history of this document. Um, basically, uh, basically uh, from uh, version four, we began to compare these two uh, young data models. And in the version uh, five, we do some modifications based on the uh, comments from Dan and the uh, working group chair. And in this version, version six, uh, we end Dan's young model into the draft to um, to show them uh, directly to the audience and other working group people to uh, to see what is is it is look like. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of discussions during uh, every week's call meeting. Uh, next page, please. Uh, here is the scenario covered by Dana Young Models. Um, basically, uh, according to the DANET architecture draft, the uh, DANET Young Models uh, is designed uh, based on two, three layers, 
the first line is the application layer and the survey sublayer and the forwarding sublayer. In each sublayer, we could choose different kind of data plan encapsulations. Uh, the combination between different kinds of data plan uh, encapsulation uh, forms different kinds of data plan draft. And the intention of the Daniel Young model is to cover all the existing data plan draft and uh, pay attention to not uh, create new ones. Uh, and in the current version, we could cover uh, the, the first three drops listed here, the uh, DANET IP, DANET IP over MPS, and DANET MPS. And the other drops are not um, uh, totally covered in the uh, existing young model, but we will uh, try to uh, try to cover them in the following versions. Um, I will take an example to uh, to to let you see the figure uh, more clearly. For example, in the the first flow, if the application is encapsulated in IP. And uh, in the service layer, it could be uh, encapsulated with the MPS label. Uh, in DANET, we call it S label. And also in the forwarding sub layer, we could encap, uh, encap this packet with another F label. Uh, so this, uh, this is the uh, IP over MPS case. And with other combinations, we could cover other uh, different kinds of data plan solutions. Uh, this uh, this figure is uh, contributed by Dong, and we all agree that uh, this figure could show the the scenarios very clearly. Maybe uh, in the following introduction, if Dong have any other thing to end, we we could uh, go back to this page again. Okay, next slide, please. Adams, or uh, if you have anything. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, basically um, one of the one of the challenges of doing the um, the the Yang configuration is there are so many combinations and permutations, both from existing technology and stuff like that. So it, uh, this this diagram kind of came about a little bit later than we probably should have in the sense that. Um, we, we, we started to, to, to track the different combinations, and then we said, um, for this version, we're actually, like you mentioned, sticking to a fairly, a fairly strict, simple case of IP over MPLS uh, service sublayer and forwarding sublayer because um, it, it, it quickly becomes complicated. So that's why we focused on the, the simple case for now, and then, the, you know the intention is to cover all cases, but I th I think but by, by focusing on that mainline case first, it it helps bring clarity to the to the um, to the discussions. Thanks. Okay, agree. Oh, Next page, please. Uh, yes, uh, here is the review of. Um, what we have discussed during the uh, every week call meeting. First, uh, we try to uh, define the architecture of the Dynamic Young model. Uh, there are a lot of ways to uh, envision the model, and we agree that the structural model has benefits. And also, we try to figure out the building blocks of the Dynamic Young model, and we also put some fingers in the mailing list. Uh, with, uh, we spent time reviewing, uh, reviewing the basic building blocks related to the model. Uh, most of the building blocks have been aligned, um, but still some of them maybe we have different opinions and uh, this dis discussion will continue. And also uh, we want to try to uh, divide uh, try to avoid some duplication information uh, showing in different uh, locations in the young model, which will cause confusion for the uh, readers, uh, especially um, 
reuse the common blocks is very helpful. And we also consider the case of aggregation. Um, consider a mainline case of an application, uh, IP application, uh, MPS data service sublayer and uh, MPS forwarding sublayer. And also, uh, once this is a grid, we can add more case for aggregation. Uh, uh, please, next page. Um, as I have mentioned, there are two existing young models in the uh, current draft. Um, one of them is contributed by Yuan Chao and one of them is contributed by Dong. Um, both of these two young models, we believe it could uh, cover the cases uh, in the existing data plan draft, uh, but there are some different uh, design considerations in these two uh, Dana Young models. Um, they have some similarities. For example, they are all layer based, including application layer, uh, service sub layer, and forwarding sub layer. And uh, they could cover all the uh, existing data plan solutions. and. Uh, also, the aggregation has already been taken into consideration, and after discussion, we uh, conclude that all these two young models could do aggregation uh, in different cases. And also, they have some differences. For example, uh, the young model is direction aware or direction unaware. Uh, and uh, another one is the the different ideas of the how to design the structure of the model. For example, different groups of parameters combined flexibly based on the requirement or use the same structure for all the cases by configuring the corresponding group. And in the following slides, uh, we will let uh, these two orders to introduce uh, his uh, young models. We will introduce the structure of the young model and also uh, give an example of how to uh, how to configure the dynamic flow with these two young models. Uh, Lu, are you in the queue? I am. Thank you. Um, I maybe I misread it or misunderstood the discussion on the weekly meeting. Um, I thought one of the other differences is that in one model, um, the same information has to be configured in multiple places, and in the other model, um, you basically configure pointers to that other information. Um, did I misunderstand that? Um, actually, in my understanding, we, uh, we agree that we should avoid uh, duplication uh, information, so I think uh, Yuan Chao has updated the model to uh, figure this out. Okay, I missed that. Thank uh, you. duplication information. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you. And the next page, I think uh, Yuan Chao will, uh, yes, will begin to introduce his young model. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Uh, 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 configuration young model have a th uh, three part of a container. One for the app flow. This is app flow container. There have a app flow name and in segment and out segment. In segment, uh, similar of this F flow key value. Uh, identify which F flow is mapping this F flow. And out segment uh, is similar to result of this F flow. So ingress node uh, have choose 
in segment uh, as MPLS F, uh, IPF flow and our segment uh, have choose related uh, service sub layer reference point. Egress node have uh, our, um, uh, our segment uh, can choose choice outgoing interface. Next, next slide, please. This container is a service sub layer. Service sub layer has a name and their operation. In segment, the same as this service sub layer key value. Uh, ingress node have a IP uh, ingress proxy operation. So in segment, have an IP uh, F flow reference point. And our segment have a folding sub layer reference point. And EGRS node can be choose uh, MPLS uh, net flow identification value. And our segment can choose uh, related F flow reference point. And Delay node in uh, at the delay node case, in segment can choose uh, incoming uh, then net flow identification value, and our segment can choose our uh, related folding sub layer reference point. Next uh, slide, please. This is folding sub layer container. Uh, in, in segment and out segment uh, have a service sub layer reference point and folding identification value and related uh, service sub layer and outgoing interface. At the, Relay or ingress node have a service sub layer reference point. Choose service sub layer at ingress uh, in segment, and our segment uh, can choose going interface reference point. Uh, relay node and egress node. Choice uh, can choice in segment to have, have a folding application value, and our segment is uh, service sub layer reference point. And at the transient node, uh, in segment can choice folding identification value, and our segment uh, is have a outgoing interface reference. Uh, next slide, please. This is an uh, example topology. Uh, their incoming IPF flow 1.1.1.128.8.8.8. Ingress node have a uh, I, uh, ingress proxy to MPLS then net flow. And egress node terminate the then net flow and outgoing IPF flow. And relay node one have a uh, relay node one can be replicate to member flow and relay node to eliminate the two member flow and outgoing one single compound flow. Next slide, please. 
just uh, one second uh, on on that slide. Um, this this is the <clears throat> the point at which we began having the discussions about the S labels and the different values for the the S labels. Um, so they, those S labels could be all the same as well. Stinker delayed node two. So you're you're saying that the labels are the same at and at any replication or elimination points. Yes. Yes. But they could be the same all the way through too. Yes. Next slide, please. This is configuration example for ingress node. There have uh, three configuration. One for the flow. Flow have a F, uh, name is F one, and in segment. Uh, have uh, interface uh, zero and source and destination IP address. Our segment uh, have a service sublayer reference point as uh, SSL one. And service sublayer configuration is a name of SSL SSL one, and the traffic requirement. To, as a show, show in this configuration and protection configuration have a sequence number long SN minutes 28 bit sequence number and sub, sub layer in segment has a uh, related F flow reference point F1 and our segment uh, has a uh, encapsulated S label info. And next layer uh, info has uh, FSL1, folding sublayer reference point. And folding sublayer configuration has a uh, name of uh, SL1 and their traffic. Spec configuration as like this, uh, and boarding operation is important for the and in segment is can have have uh, related uh, service double reference SSL one, and our segment uh, configuration has uh, uh, F labor value forty two. And outgoing interface it has ETH one. Uh, next slide, please. This is for example for relay node. Uh, relay node first of all have config folding sub layer for terminated uh, LSP. So folding sublayer uh, configuration have a name of FSL1. Uh, their incoming F label is configured at in segment. So in segment to have a label 42 and our segment configure at SSL1 that indicated uh, this uh, folding in sublayer pop and related with SSL1 service sublayer. And service sublayer SSL1 has a protection configuration. Protection type has a relate, uh, replication and Coming 
five 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 as label swap to our segment uh, have a swap label value six 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 and there will be forward to two forwarding sub layer one one is a uh, f FSL three, FSL uh, FSL two and three have our segment configuration for outgoing F label and outgoing interface reference point. Next slide, please. This is for uh, transient node configuration. Uh, transient node uh, in segment configuration for the F label, uh, incoming S uh, F label, and outgoing uh, out segment configuration for the outgoing uh, swap S label, uh, swap F label. So. There are folding operation type uh, could be swap and fold. Next slide, please. This is a uh, configuration for related to the, there happen at uh, happen for elimination. Uh, FSL two and FSL three is incoming boarding sub uh, boarding sub layer. Uh, in segment to uh, have a label value five and forty six, and their operation is pop and look up. And our segment to uh, two Boarding sub layer can configure a same service sub layer reference point SSL1. And SSL1 sub sub layer configuration have an incoming uh, S, S label value 66666 and their protection. Uh, services protection type have uh, elimination and going uh, swap the S label configure it the out segment and next layer configuration for the outgoing compound uh, flow boarding sub layer. So. FSL4 boarding sublayer configuration has a uh, related service sublayer reparation point SSL1 configured in segment and out segment has a outgoing F label 47 and outgoing interface has a ETH2. Uh, next slide, please. This configuration egress. Uh, egress node, first of all, they pop the F flow. So, in segment to have a 47 incoming F label configuration, and our segment to have a relate uh, service sub layer reference point SSL1 and service sub layer. SSL1 has a uh, S label value 7777 at the in segment. And their out segment uh, has a related F flow reference uh, F1. And their operation type is service termination. And F flow configuration. In segment is F flow ident identification value. 
And our segment uh, configuration has an uh, outgoing interface, ETH1. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, I'm done. Thank you. OK. Um, so uh, a little bit of uh, background on the, on, the, on the second model here. Um, what was happening was we were um, writing the uh, uh, full model draft, and we were having um, uh, difficulty mapping what was in the flow model map to the Yang. So that was the origin of why we started with an, another model, and it was um, basically to um, to to model more closely following the flow model. Now, over time, um, the the actual two models have become a lot closer together. So, um, you know, regardless of what we choose, um, the the models are getting closer and closer as we work through this. Um, so the the concepts we've already seen the application the service and forwarding layer um, and we as mentioned up up front um, we we found a lot of similarities and we've been working through in weekly meetings and by um, delving into details some of the some of the pieces um, so there is quite a bit of material if people are, uh, care in the uh, DetNet Yang repository about some more detailed slides and, and stuff like that. Um, but the the this model was basically trying to leverage some of the symmetry in the flow model, um, reuse as much IP and existing uh, Yang from other uh, um, drafts. That is uh, actually got into the both models now so we are reusing common components and ally, align with the existing QoS and traffic specifications go on so this was um, the summary that uh, Belaz had actually put together for the um, the app uh, sort of the um, the flow model and it, it it broke apart the app flow the detnet flow and the and the service and these components were the things that we were trying to work into this model make sure that they were they were captured so um, the model that I started with used this structure and used these um, attributes in the model next slide so the the structure of the models are, are, are quite similar, but um, this was the the structure um, that we ended up, and this is always an iterative thing, I think, with a, a large model like this. You start out with something, and you try it, and then um, you go back, and you see what's working and, and, and what's not. The organization of the components is the same. You've got the application, the service, and the forwarding sublayer. The application um, components are together, uh, both directions. So you've got an, uh, an ingress and an egress in the model. And then the service uh, components are organized together as a, as a complete unit. They could do ingress and egress. You could imagine them grouped together like they are in the application. But because MPLS and IP are basically unidirectional, I, I've shown them as configured as separate objects, where you're using the outbound piece of the service um, the service configuration in one direction, and you're using the inbound in the other. So there's a in in the models, the one difference you'll see is that there's more of a directional um, influence in this model, where just the, the directions are separate. They could be together in the same component if you wanted. But they don't have to be because um, the flexibility in the architecture allows both. You can go on to the next slide. So when you look at this level, 
um, and this is a summarized level of the applications tree. You, you see um, very similar to the the, the previous diagram that uh, Young Chol um, presented. The one difference is that, um, like I, I said, it's kind of directional in the sense that the linkage to the service component, the outbound and the inbound, is at the top layer. And the ingress functions and the egress functions are 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 separated from that. So if you look, if you you go back and you look, I don't I don't suggest we do it here, but you can go back and look, or you can look in the draft at the difference. That's one of the differences in the model. So when you're configuring, you'll see that we go down one branch in in one side, and then you go down the other branch in the other side. You can go on to the next one. Similarly, for the um, service sublayer, um, there's um, there's an outbound side and an inbound side, and um, if you're using the unidirectional model, you'll only be going down one branch of the tree. If you happen to have them both together in the same model, you could have both of them configured together. Go to the next slide. And for the forwarding sublayer, the same same uh, organization. So for the reference pointers, um, I, I started out um, trying to make sure that you only had to configure the reference pointers in one place. It ended up being when I went when I went and I did the configuration model with Yanglint. The most obvious place to do that was in the service sublayer. So you actually configure the reference pointers that um, you, you will be using for the, the, the various pieces once in the service submodel and the, the ones in the, um, in the application and the forwarding layer to the service can actually be um, inferred by the backend processes from that one link. So you don't have to, um, to manage both of the pointers and get them right. You should be able to configure the pointers for the service references in one place. Uh, go on to the next. So this is the uh, the example of the configuration in this one, and it, so you will see the the difference here is that for the um, for the application side, there's an application, and there's only an application ingress. There is a um, it, it's not shown as the service reference is not shown in the application uh, configuration because that's a read-only object and the, the, the configuration that I'm using in Yanglint is showing a config model, not an operational model. In an operational model, you would actually see the, uh, the uh, service sublayer reference pointer at, at the application. And then in the services, you can see the application uh, reference, and you can see the um, forwarding sublayer reference. And again, it's it's only in one direction in the in the services layer here. And then the forwarding sublayer again, you, you've got um, the the reference because it's uh, it's configured in the services sublayer. You don't see it in the forwarding model because this is a config model. You would see it in the operational model. So very similar um, attributes, we kind of aligned our examples to similar pieces so you could compare them more easily. And this is just showing down at the bottom, we, this is the basically an application, uh, an edge node configuration showing all of the three components. Go on to the next one. So in the, in the reverse direction, when you're uh, coming back in from the forwarding sublayer, you have a very similar structure, but now we're, we're going on an input in the forwarding sublayer, and that goes into the service with the MPLS. You just need to identify it by the service sublabel, and um, it, it knows the because of the uh, the application that is is tied to that label. It can it can refer to that application, and then you have the application piece, and then the application. Uh, configuration for that. So,
that's basically um, where this model stands. It still needs um, a few a few pieces as we work through the different uh, cases, but that's the the overall organization. And I would say that we we have come a long way in using common components and common names. So we're getting pretty close. It's it's getting harder and harder to see the differences. Um, next next slide. So um, at this point, um, we we have to figure out the 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 for the the model what we're doing, and then uh, get some more input from the working group if they feel you know anything in these in, in these models in particular should be kept, um, and uh, we should be discussing here what the next steps are. Open the floor up. We've got a bit of time left to. Um, you know, for some people to ask some questions and and to get a feel for what we think the next step should be in this. Yeah, I I have to say that I think from um, you know I I've, I've been attending the meetings and also sort of trying to track the general situation, but I I think it's really hard to see what the the core differences are and what the core question that's being asked of the working group. I don't know if it makes sense to go to the back to that similarities and differences slide. You know, presumably it's in these differences that the questions exist, right? I don't know which author I'm addressing this to? Obviously, I'm addressing it to any author. <laughs> um, you know, does it make sense to talk from here and say, you know, what? And, and for some one of the authors to specifically say, what question are you asking of the working group? Uh, and if you're just saying you're getting status of where you're working through and that you're going to continue working through these in the weekly meetings. That's fine. You know, that's that's actually a fine statement, also. So, the I, I think that um, uh, the 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 strategy that we've been following was we had the models and we're now starting to ver validate it with the configuration. I think the configuration piece, I view the the model as the superset tree and the configuration as the subtree that you know the user has to deal with. And I think that's bring, bringing clarity to the subject. If you look at the, what was presented today, the only difference that I see is that, um, not the only difference, but the major difference I would see between the two models is that in the original model, there's this concept of an in-segment and an out-segment. Um, and in, in the model that I presented, there's a, there's a uh, Pointer to the service sublayer that's not in the out segment, but it you know that is that is a just a pointer, and there's basically uh, uh, the flow is as as a, a a packet or a frame comes in, you do an operation on it, and then you hand it off to the next layer. Um, the when we originally did the discussions, there was a lot more. There was sort of some ingress processing and then some egress processing. But in the configura configuration models that I see today, there was not much on the egress processing anymore. It was just a pointer to the other layers. So we we have converged, and we have to make sure that you know we're not talking past each other. Um, so I think there's more work just to make sure that you know we are on that same page. But I think the models are closer today than they've ever been. Do any of the other authors want to uh, say anything? Uh, actually, I agree with them. Um, after these um, discussions, we have this uh, have discussions a lot, and these two young models are becoming more and more similar. And a lot of uh, details we have discussed them make them uh, more similar, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, I think uh, maybe it is hard for the working group to give direct uh, suggestions uh, because uh, there are a lot of uh, details in the young model and it is difficult to see which one is better uh, in the call meeting. And uh, perhaps from, the, from my point of view, View. I just want to show the progress of the young model to the working group, and uh, after the interim, we will continue to have the uh, call meeting, and uh, 
if the difference is not so uh, significant, I think we could uh, fix them together and to uh, make a better uh, young model to combine these two models. This is my opinion. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Yangshan, do, do you want to say anything or do you agree? I agree. So, I mean, from, from my standpoint, I'm hearing that this is just an update and to let people know that the, the work is continuing in these weekly meetings. The meetings are announced and open to everyone. Um, so, you know, I, I, I appreciate the, the update and also the work to work towards, you know, moving things that are maybe differences into, you know, figuring out the similarities and, and figuring out how to bring these together. Uh, if you do hit a point where you want input, you know, specific input, or you, you know, hit a roadblock, uh, certainly feel free to bring it to the list. Um, uh, I know you're discussing this on the list, and that's great. Uh, also, we can discuss it at the, at 108, which isn't too far away. Um, so, from my standpoint, I, I appreciate the update, and uh, more importantly, also, is appreciate the hard work to, to bring forward a, an integrated solution. So, uh, thank you. Uh, we have time. We have a couple of minutes for other questions. If anyone wants to jump in queue or other topics. Uh, well, with that, then I think we can close the meeting. Um, Janos, any final words? Yeah, I also would uh, like to join in thanking for the hard work uh, done by, uh, by all the contributors. Uh, like uh, finalizing the core data plane drafts and um, progressing the the rest of the data plane drafts and the flow information and so on and then uh, now the yang being the major work item and all these uh, weekly working meetings and discussions and and and, uh, and uh, progress made and very, thank you very much for for all the updates and um, looking forward to to moving on and make uh, further progress Okay, uh, thank you all. Uh, with that, we close the meeting. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.